So we have with us today Dr. Blair Duddy, local pediatrician extraordinaire, UCLA alum, and pro-science, pro-children. So one of your one of your passions, uh, Blair, is the idea that children who have certain intellectual abilities, higher IQs, uh, gifted children, talented children, have a hard time in our current educational and social system actually surviving uh, without a lot of suffering, without a lot of downside, which is counterintuitive. You think, well, those are the guys that become the Silicon Valley nerds and make us all look bad and drive uh, Porsches and have trophy wives. That's not what actually happens. You have a kind of a, a vested interest in this with your own children. Uh, tell us about your, you know, your thoughts around this and your work in this fit. So I was thinking about you when I was watching the show that you had with Mrs. Dr. Z Dog. Yes. And you were talking about parenting in general, and it was wonderful that you guys were vulnerable because we need people to do that. Mm. Like people like Chrissy Teigen who talked about her postpartum depression. It's super important and it's a challenge to parent. We all stress out even as a pediatrician, as a pseudo expert. You know, it's a challenge. I'm always thinking, am I doing the right thing? Yeah. Uh, but what I was thinking about was when you talked about what a handful you were as a kid to your parents, I was like, oh, that's the giftedness. Because- I knew it. See that mom and dad? Well, it's, Gifted AF right no, here. It's hard to talk about it because it's like you're, you're you know, um, braggy. It's, you know, mm. it, it's, uh, you can brag about your kid being in the Little League World Series, but don't talk about him being, you know, in the gifted program. That's kind of true. Right. Yeah. yeah. But it, it's really an attribute, just like any attribute. What you do with it is depending on your work ethic and your heart and all that, just like, Anything. you know, yeah. Um, and so when I see young families with, uh, with kids that are gifted, I really try to help identify them early and let them know because one of the things is the, the smarter they are, the more stubborn they tend to be when they're young. I was thinking about <laughs> your daughter too. <laughs> and the more um, stuff they get, and get into, yeah. um, high intellect goes with high anxiety, so they tend to be high strung. Um, they get this incredible sense of right and wrong, and it's kind of you too, like when they see the news and they see injustice, it's really hard for them. So you have to like shelter them from that. Um, it's really a special need, you know, so there's several ways to find gifted, you know, using IQ testing is one of them, and it's surprisingly um, effective, meaning huh. you think there's some subjectivity to it, and I see kids that are tested several times, and they're usually within four or five points. This is just an attribute, just like height or BMI. Mm. It's like a vital sign almost. Yeah, yeah and yeah. so, you know, gifted, some definitions would be two standard deviations above the normal, would be the top, you know, two and a half percent of that tier, which would be 130. And, and the thing I talk about is that, that having a 130 IQ when 100 is mean is as far away from the mean as 100 is from 70. So 70 is sort of the upper reaches of Down syndrome. Mm -hmm. Would anyone allow their 10-year-old uh, to be in a class, would it be appropriate of you know, 20 kids with Down syndrome? And there's no value judgment about that, of course, mm. uh, but it just wouldn't be a good educational experience. So putting a, a, these gifted kids in with, with uh, neurotypical kids is very problematic. It's really a special need, and they get bored. Uh, if you look at uh, dropout rates in high school, the, the two, two ends of those extremes, um, uh, and the gifted have a high dropout rate, they have a high uh, substance abuse rate, they get bored. So you, you use, the, use the term, I mean, there's so much to unpack in this, and of course it's of acute interest to me because I'm a freaking genius. You don't understand, like <laughs> off the charts. I took an IQ test on United Airlines in their little Sky Mall brochure, yeah. And I broke uh, the thing. It, it 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 melted because the score was undefined because I got a lot of them wrong. Well, you're of course joking because you have to, but it's it's true. Like but, but what you bring together is very unusual. And again, thinking about you as a kid would be very hard to raise the kid. I, I bet I, you were very I, difficult. You've talked about that you're op a little oppositional. Yeah, incre um, incredible. Still oppositional. Right. Still high anxiety. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Still right and wrong. Cannot. stand when yep. I see yep. things That's that so I think are dumb and I can't shut up about it. And I love the word you use, neurotypical, right. to, in, to talk about more of the mean IQ because that is now what I'm gonna call both Tom and Logan, even though it's, <laughs> even though it's inaccurate. Hey, I got a 120 Z when I took that test. I'm but the kids with the tism were too weird. So. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> well, you know, the other thing that's common in the gifted is actually uh, incarceration. If you look at incarcerated people, they tend to be. And I've, so yeah, I've been incarcerated, so I'm gifted. What's that up? Is, huh? 
What's up? <laughs> no, it, it is, uh, we have to pay attention to these kids. And in the end, mm. it's kind of the rule of thirds. A third do wildly well, they're, you know, Supreme Court justices, they become Z-Dog. A third medium well, you know, professional types. And then a third of them, very poorly. They, you know, the high anxiety, they can't be functional in society, you know, and we have to keep keep on, on track of this and their development to really help them out. So, so I, alm I never hear anybody you were the first person I've talked to in the medical space that has talked about uh, uh, high IQ individuals like this. It, it, it's almost like, oh, there's a, there's a component of, oh, those assholes, right? right? And, and the idea that they could have a deep kind of suffering, that they might not do well in the world, that they're a square peg trying to fit in a round hole, these ideas aren't really explored much. Um, no, it's absolutely true. They deal well, as children, they, they react well or inter interact well with older kids and younger kids, but typically not same age peers. Yeah, yeah. I had one family with a gifted kid and um, he was in kindergarten. He came home and he told his mom, I think there's something wrong with the other kids' brains. Because they get bored. If a, a neurotypical yeah. kid, I mean, if a neurotypical kid needs, you know, 10 exposures reps to learn a new concept, the uh, the gifted kids learn it really fast. And so from rep two to 10, they're bored, right? Yeah, you probably yeah. remember that in yeah. school. Yeah, yeah. And then sometimes if an unsophisticated teacher would be like, oh, you're doing so well, we'll give you more. Well, that's kind of punitive. Yeah. What they should do is if the kids have 20, um, 20 homework problems in math, they'll throw in the five or 10 the other kids are doing and then give them some advanced ones on top of that. Right, right, um, right. You know, skipping, um, I would say most, um, Sources I've seen will actually ha recommend skipping in the right kid. Mm. I kind of don't get it personally yeah. because I worry about you don't want to be a 14 year old graduating high school. Right. You know, I have a patient that was an 18 year old, he graduated college. And, you know, he still had the maturity of an 18 year old. Right. He was kind of unhirable in the way he was, yeah. you know, just the way he comported himself, but he was obviously uh, very bright. I said, go to grad school, right? Right. You know, uh, well, you look at like uh, Elizabeth Holmes from Theranos, who's now the subject of a huge SEC investigation. Oh, Young dropout yep. from Stanford, always a Doogie Howser type ahead of the curve, and turns out she had very low, you know, I've talked to people who know her. Uh, her emotional intelligence is not very high. There's a lot of other issues with her that probably led to the, 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 the downfall, you know? So this idea that you can be intellectually gifted, but, but socially or... It, there, the way I see it, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, there are multiple lines of intelligence. Um, yeah. And IQ is one, math is one, you right. know, verbal reasoning is one. But, but there are emotional lines of intelligence, there are social lines of intelligence, there are physical lines of intelligence, the, the, the sp kids who get bragged about for the sports, which I thought, is, it's absolutely true. You can tell, uh, my kid is first pick in the draft for this, yeah! But oh, my kid has a really high IQ and uh, is acing all his classes, but is socially awkward and, my, uh, yeah. No, a lot, of, a lot of times giftedness is asynchronous. They're very, you know, great in math and not in the other. Those yeah. kids have the hardest time. They, they yeah. really, they have a higher chance of depression as well. Mm. Although, certainly anxiety, I, again, I read the literature about depression and some people feel it's higher. My clinical experience would be yes, especially the kids with asynchronous. They're very great in math, but maybe not as uh, strong in um, language arts. Or they have, they're what they call twice exceptional. They have, um, they're gifted, but they have a learning disability, uh -huh. like dyslexia or ADHD. Yeah. Sometimes I'll be referred to a kid uh, with possible ADHD, poor focused attention, and the diagnosis is actually gifted. Is what uh -huh. They don't have to pay attention. They know they're gonna go over it five times. And um, really, I if, you're, if you're a Ferrari hitting on four cylinders, you can still keep up with the Camrys, right? So these kids just tune out. Okay, first of all, yeah. how dare you <laughs> insult a Camry because that's what I drive. <laughs> Number next, um, I, I think you're right, especially on the multiple different lines of intelligence and the asynchronous development. So just my own personal anecdote, and again, I'm not saying I'm in any way particularly gifted, but I was pretty good at verbal stuff, history, social stuff. I had some gift in that. Math had always been a, a kind of a secret Achilles heel because I was good enough that with the other kids in the class, I looked pretty smart. But compared to smart kids, I was, developmentally delayed. And, and when thrust into the pre-med world in college, I had never had to study in my life until college calculus. And I, I delayed calculus. I stopped at trig in junior year because I was so terrified of math, uh, secretly. 
And I just said, oh, I want senior year to do a bunch of APs, which I did, which allowed me to graduate Berkeley in three years. But that first year taking calculus, it was the most humiliating experience of my life because I felt as just absolutely dumb and overwhelmed and everybody just got it. And I was reading the math textbook, trying to learn how to do math. And I, I'd never been that depressed and upset and anxious. And so do you see that as kind of a... No, absolutely. A lot of times they're also perfectionists. Mm. So like you did terrible, you got a B instead of an A, right? That's kind of what it was. Yeah. <laughs> right. Again, it's an inherent trait. What right. you do with it, uh, you know, uh, is who you are as a person, right? Someone say uh, with Down syndrome trisomy 21, who's got the 70 IQ, they often have a very high social IQ. They're lovely, yeah. loving people and, yeah. you know, they're, you know, one of the stores, one of them's a bagger and she's the sweetest thing in the world. And she's of more value to our society than that, can I say D-bag on this show? Please, yeah. yes, you can say that, anything uh, you like. Scarelli guy, the farmer boy. He's probably, yeah, he's probably, you know, gifted to get where he's at. But the world is not a great place because he's been in it. Right. I mean, it's just, here's, here's your attributes that you're gifted, what you do with them and how we help them navigate those to be a good person in society, that's what we, you know, want. I have a question for you, Dr. Dudley. Is this a, an interesting point of fascination for you because you're obviously a very smart guy. Do you feel you were mishandled going through school? Um, no, I mean, I made it, I was smart. You know, my, my, my kids are super smart. I'm at the end of the, the uh, trail. My son's a senior mm. in high school and he's made it through. We've been in every uh, educational situation, public, private. He's at a very good uh, magnet school mm -hmm. right now, and that's uh, been a great school with lots of smart kids and very supportive. I think early on we did actually homeschool off and on. Yeah. My wife uh, was a teacher, and that was helpful. One of the families I take care of, the dad's actually uh, ENT in town, and they have gifted kids, and they were kind of frustrated when we were talking about it quite early. And you know where do you put these kids? Yeah. And the the private schools, and he's an ENT, so he can afford you know the more expensive tuitions. They have generally bright kids, but it's still different, and the social emotional needs are not always met or identified. Right. Especially in boys who can act out. Right. Um, so anyway, they started. I was never uh, caught. They started time. a school, <laughs> so they started. Then it's just here in town. It's been around about a year and a half. Called the. Nasri Academy, and I'm mm -hmm. actually one of their like I guess volunteer boards. It's a board members. It's um, you know it's a nonprofit. Yeah, uh, and they're just trying to get it up. But it's hard because you know you have to get you know we're starting with that end of the two standard deviations. Uh, two two percent of the population gifted, 0.1 percent highly gifted, which is like 145 IQ. Yeah. So they're they're you know getting up and running, and um, they really focus a lot on this these topics, the yeah. emotional needs of the gifted. So you know, because what I notice, what I notice with my oldest daughter, and she does violin, and she obviously is decent at school, is that she has trouble getting the Good Citizen Award that pretty much everybody gets. It's kind <laughs> of like a participation yeah. trophy, <laughs> and it means that you're not a you're, you you listen in class and you're not fidgety and you're respectful and all these things and she has trouble getting it. Right. And it upsets her deeply that she can't get it. And I think it's a lot of that is the agitation because when you watch her practice violin, she'll play something, it'll be a mistake, she will drop to the floor and start crying. Uh. And in a way that she's inconsolable. And I think it go, it's this with high intelligence comes high anxiety is a, is, it's a fact for many. You know, when I see uh, straight A students, I ask the mom, because his dads are idiots and don't always know, you know, <laughs> is she a perfectionist? Right. And the mom will know, say yes or no. They yeah. know what I'm talking about. And that's something to work on, right? Yeah. Because what I talk to them about, to the kid, is if they're old enough to understand that, like your daughter's age would be like, you know, we all make mistakes and people that, that um, that accomplish a lot all have a story, a failure story in there, mm -hmm. right? And so sometimes I'll tell the big fail story of the Lisa computer. Oh yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. most people don't know that. I wanted a Lisa when I was a kid. Yeah. That's how much you of know, a nerd I was. If you found one at a swap meet now, they're worth like 60 grand or something You wanna like hear that. a story? So someone in elementary school handed me a Lisa keyboard that he said fell off the back of a truck. Uh -huh. And I didn't realize that was slang for he stole it. Yikes. And he just gave it to me. He's like, you seem like the kind of guy who'd want this. And it said Lisa <laughs> on it and this and that. And I was like, wow. And I was so weirded out that I took it to 
the teacher and was like, look what this guy gave me. And he's like, that's stolen. And I, got, I had to sit in front of the principal and explain how I, I had to say, yeah. Well, most people don't know the story, but of mm. course it's the big story of, you know, a failure of Steve Jobs. And he didn't give up and he, you know, learned from it. What was the, what was the problem with the Lisa computer? I don't even know. Was it the hardware, software, marketing, whatever? Yeah. And then the next version, next computer was the Mac, the Mac right? Yeah. And so these kids that are perfectionists, they don't try things they might not be perfect at. They're super anxious, um, so it can be torturous. It turns out ignorance really is bliss. Ignorance can be <laughs> bliss. Uh, you know, what's the ironic twist on that story is Lisa was the name of his, his daughter. daughter. Yep, yeah. And his daughter from another wife who was, I believe, I, I forget the story when I read in his, uh, his autobiography, but she was a little bit more ignored. Yeah. Uh, and only reconnected with him later in life. So brother, like you're fighting the forces of evil, you have the, 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 the Star Wars gear, you're pro-science, you love patients, you love what you do, and you fight for people that nobody fights for, the gifted. Blair Daddy is the man. Oh, the you, man! Sir. Thank you for coming on the show. And remember, if you or someone you love is gifted, you're a nerd and need to be stopped. Is that right? Is that the premise? <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little bit. Roughly. We out! Just give me that.